What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Pikmin. In the last episode, we crushingly only got one part at the Distant Spring because I messed up at the very end. And on the other hand, though, we did get quite a few Pikmin. We built up our numbers. We're approaching a thousand Pikmin in total, which is uh, pretty nuts. And in this episode, we're hopefully going to finish up the Distant Spring, whether that's in one day or two. Honestly, I'm pretty confident we can actually get all four of these parts because they are these specific four parts and we've already cleared out most of the area. So I'm thinking we'll be able to do it and maybe even have some time to show off some other stuff. So let's hope for the best and give it all we got. Luckily, I mean, yesterday we took out so many of the enemies in our way to these parts that we really won't have too much competition there, which is really nice. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is to make sure we can work with as large of an army as we would like to. We're gonna pluck these guys. And you'll notice that of course, we're still missing one Pikmin and that's because far off out there, somebody who got crushed by a Wallywog is still haunting my attempts to be tactically efficient. Um, so let's take out a lot of blue Pikmin. And let's take out a decent amount of yellow Pikmin. We're hopefully not going to need too many. Because you guys know why we're getting the yellow Pikmin out. But really the remaining parts in this area all have to do with water Pikmin and we don't have to worry about too many enemies so we don't need to worry about damage output. So I feel quite comfortable actually just bringing a whole bunch of water Pikmin. All right, we got all 80. They're plucking grass, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is probably come over here. Yeah, I think that's that's good. Luckily, we don't actually need to break that gate. Um, something that I was surprised by is that the, the Pikmin will actually take that pilot cushion through this little gap here. All right, fine, if you really wanna take it, go for it. Be my guest. So yeah, the first thing we're gonna do is this. Um, we've got the, oh, that's right, we already <laughs> interacted with the pilot's cushion, so we should be good. Let's see here. That should be good enough. All right, so while they are doing that, oh, I probably should have attacked while we had our large crowd. Let's see if we can lure one of the dumples over. Just one of them. Nice. Alright, swarm. Okay. And that swarm inadvertently lured the other dumple over. It seems to be stuck. I guess that's fine for now. And now we can take advantage of that to attack the last dumple. I was worried because I didn't want to have to, you know, deal with too many of them at once with a relatively small Pikmin army, but nope. They, uh, they took care of that for me. So I think that should be enough for this. We're gonna have to throw some Pikmin across the gap. Hope they're not too afraid. Hopefully they all make it. Uh, some of them are not making it. Guys! Really? Okay. <laughs> that was not, again, how I anticipated this going. This is all a flashback to the end of last episode. Alright, that should be enough. I don't know why the, uh, the first ones went across just fine, and then these ones all of a sudden... There we go. Come on. Alright, well, all things considered, the part is moving, and that's, at the end of the day, all I can ask for. We don't need to worry about enemies, we don't need to worry about anything else. And the pilot cushion already made it back, wow. Um, so the pilot seat. Uh, picturing this in the cockpit, images of me lifting off into space begin to fill my tax brain. It fills me with inspiration once again. Aw, Olimar, I always love giving you hope. So we've only got three more parts here. In the meantime, what do we want these guys to do? We have, what, 29 on us? We'll have one go there, you can take this, you can take that, we're only gonna need 20. I think each of those requires, oh, five? 
Alright, well, then for now, that's okay. We'll have you take that one pellet back. And what we are going to do is a puzzle here. You'll see these are called Candy Pop Buds. And what they do is they allow you to change one type of Pikmin into another type, basically. That's what their function is in terms of these puzzles. Come on, don't slide off. Ah. Come on, guys. Stay up there, stay up there, stay up there. This is my least favorite part of this part. <laughs> is that... You have to count on them staying up there. Okay, stay up there, guys. So while they're up there, we need to call them. And then we have our handy dandy candy pop bud. And so we can throw a whole bunch of Pikmin in here, 10 at a time. Or more, actually, I guess. I didn't realize you could actually fit more than 10 in at a time. But that's okay. And it'll allow us to convert our blue Pikmin into yellow Pikmin, which is always, uh, well not always, but in this very specific case, incredibly helpful. <laughs> the number two Ionium Jet. The ads for these jets boast they or boast that with excellent mileage that's easy on the family budget, this jet will keep your wife smiling and propel you to a happy home life. <laughs> Olimar, building a ship for his wife. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's start plucking these guys. And the idea is, well, we need the yellow Pikmin because they have the ability to you know, jump really high, or to be thrown really high up, and the part that we want to get in that corner can't be reached with the blue Pikmin. So we've got to convert the blue Pikmin to yellow Pikmin to throw them up there. We need to very carefully do this so we don't drown a bunch of our Pikmin. Because that would not be enjoyable. <laughs> Alright, come on over, guys. There we go. Let's get a nice arc. Ooh, lovely arc. Doing great. There we go. That's a lot better. Look at that one yellow Pikmin there, just like, hovering. Okay. You too. Come on. Come on. One more. <laughs> do it, do it. There we go. Okay, so now that we have 20 up there, what is this again? My Kronos Reactor. Using strange new technology, this machine is able to warp the space-time continuum and turn it into energy. I'm constantly amazed at how many mysteries are locked inside the parts of my ship. Yeah, Olivar really doesn't have much of an understanding of what's going on in his ship. It's quite comical. Alright, so... Landing the, uh... What's it called? The yellow Pikmin into this candy bud has proven pretty difficult in the past, but I think we did a surprisingly good job there. So, let's see if we can keep it up. Alright, that was pretty painless. The last time I tried to use the candy bot buds were converting the yellow Pikmin into something else. It was really difficult to aim them because they have such a high, I guess, flight trajectory. But no, that worked pretty well. And so with that, we should have 20 blue Pikmin. You can make it over there, Alomar. Alright. That one is stuck on the candy pop bud. Come on, guys. Are you kidding me? What is going on? Do you guys see this? Okay. Please tell me that works. Okay. It was like so weird. It was like stuck inside the candy pop bud for a bit. Alright, so now that we've done that, and they are on their way, they're only leaf Pikmin, so they are going to be moving very slowly, but they are moving, and we have half of a day, honestly, so I'm not too worried. Now, I'm gonna do this my, my kind of slow way again, where I throw them all up there, and then walk up myself. <laughs> I love that sound effect. And then throw them one level higher, but this time I'm gonna be very careful and not, er, and use the C-Stick to prevent them from falling into that, well, off the ledge, rather. Okay, they're up there. And I threw 19 of them up. I only need 10, but I threw up 19 just so that I have a backup plan. The Kronos Reactor is moving along just fine. Again, we don't really need to worry about any enemies on this side, which is really nice. Okay, C-Stick, good. There we go, that's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. I forget what this is again. <laughs> the light something. All right, 
So while they are doing that, we're gonna get the rest of our blue Pikmin, and we're gonna go clean up some of the corpses and stuff, I guess. And we can also use these guys to help out, I guess, with that a little bit. And help out the leaf Pikmin, because they need it. And then you guys can help take back some of the corpses. And honestly, with that, we'll be all clear. Which is kind of crazy to think about. The UV lamp. This handy light is great for tanning, but it doesn't seem to have any relation to the dolphin's flight capabilities. I doubt that it will affect my escape from this planet. Perhaps there are other parts like this as well. Can we just talk about how Olimar has a Geiger counter to detect radiation while he's traveling in space. He also has, I think, a UV... Like, what is it? The bow string that protects from... Oh no, it's the radiation canopy. Yeah, the radiation canopy that protects him from all the ultraviolet radiation and other light and stuff. And then on the inside, he's using a UV lamp, right? Ah, uh, oh, Olimar. For the record, please don't use UV lamps for tanning or anything like that. It's so bad for your skin. But, alright. Where, where was I going again? This way. Okay. Yeah, we can get rid of those dumple corpses and build our Pikmin numbers a little bit more. We could go fight some Wallywogs, I guess, if we wanted to build up our numbers even more. But it's probably not worth it. Maybe not. There's some more bomb rocks there if you wanted to use them to fight some of the bull bears. I don't know if you guys remember, but like the clammy clam clams or whatever they are. Um, I used two of those yellow Pikmin to throw bombs at them to do a bunch of damage. You can do that with regular enemies too. The Kronos Reactor. This reactor changes permutations in the space-time continuum into pure energy. Basically, it's like a big rubber band. Just throw a whole bunch of fancy physics words out there and you'll be good to go. Right, Olimar? I've recovered 29 out of 30 parts, increasing the dolphin's capabilities. My search can now cover a wider area. All right. I love that little jingle. And I think what's really cool is that, like, it actually makes a difference in how the dolphin looks, right? You can actually see all of the changes that are made as each part is added, and, I don't know, there's a big sense of accomplishment when you see it at the end, and it looks like an actual ship. It looks like it's ready to fly, which is really cool. Well, I guess, I guess we can flower up the blue Pikmin. I do think it is unfortunate that when you put Pikmin into a candy pop bud that they end up turning into leaf Pikmin. They don't stay flowered if they were flowers before entering the candy pop bud. It's just a bit of a bummer in my opinion. Actually, wait. I was going to say, I don't want to have to pluck seeds or anything like that, <laughs> so I wanted to keep 99, or all 100 Pikmin out. Just so they add to the total, but not, you know, plant and everything. I could maybe get some more out of it. Oh, I'm going to go pluck that one Pikmin. That one that's giving me a hard time. And I guess in the meantime, we can take in the landscape a bit. You guys can see all the bridges we built, the walls we bombed down that honestly we probably didn't need to. These forested areas. You can use Pikmin to get up there by building this and then dropping off up there. That's kind of a way around. There are a lot of neat pathways through the distant springs, which is really cool. Here's our lone Pikmin. There's this gate here, which you can use to get around um, this way without having to go through that bull bear infested, puffy blowhog infested area. And, yeah, I mean, I guess we're going to have a lot of time because the final trial, the last place to go for the final part, I'm planning on doing in one day, but I wasn't planning on this being the finale. I don't know if I'm mentally prepared for the finale. Like I said, we could take down some Wallywogs. Maybe I could show you guys some hidden bosses, some of like the secret bosses or enemies in this episode. We still have to deal with this egg. So yeah, I think I think that might be the way to go. I wonder if I can break this open with Olimar. It does not seem so. All right, well, then I think that is where we'll call it with the distant spring for now. And again, we're gonna unlock one new area 
but I think it'll be best if, um, yeah, I save the final trial for another episode. So I think after this, I know you guys will want to see, wait, are there no, aw, so there were some, like, tadpole-like enemies in here that would run around and you can chase them down with Olimar, which is actually really fun. Uh, but I think those are actually what turn into the Wallywogs eventually. And the bull bear still hasn't come back yet. So I guess we'll walk around and explore the area a bit. When I'm zoomed out like this and there's a whole bunch of water, things can slow down at times, but for the most part, we'll just go for a nice little scenic walk through the distant springs. You can take in the music. I still like probably Forest of Hope the most. There's this little patch here, which I find hilarious. Um, you can flower up your Pikmin if in the middle of the fight with the Puffy Blowhog or the Wallywogs or the Dumples out here, you're having some trouble. There's this Wallywog all the way out here, which I don't think we ever really dealt with much. Just for the sake of it. Oh, and what might you be? <laughs> Hello there. Welcome to, I guess, an introduction to one of the secret enemies or bosses I was planning on showing in a little bit. This is the Smoky Prog, and I don't know why it came out, because it hatches from that egg, and I didn't think I was able to hit it, but... Sure enough, it's gone. So the smoky frog comes out, and trying to fight this that thing is really, really difficult. And a lot of Pikmin would be lost. Even though overall it usually ends up as a net plus, it's uh it's a very much an uphill battle. So that's gonna be saved for another day. And probably one just for the sake of recording, and not one that'll actually save to the file. So, anyways, there's your first glimpse of the Smoky Prog. I'll be fighting this in just a moment when I can very, I guess, calmly say, continue from last save after having lost 80 Pikmin or something like that in the fight. Because, oh man, this thing is tough. And then there are two other enemies I want to show. So, all right, that sounds like a good plan. Are they going to show the smoky frog still at the base? It's so funny. Whatever it does, it always tries to track you down and hunt you down, but it almost always comes back to your onion base. So with that, we have the Distant Springs done. I hope you guys enjoyed the relatively calm ending to the Distant Springs. I'm actually really shocked with how quick those four parts went. I was feeling very overwhelmed when I was thinking that we'd have four parts to get rid of in one day but we really got it all done in about half a day, which goes to show that you can really optimize things in this level. In fact, I know a lot of speedruns can do, well, will, will do every single place in one day, which is nuts. But anyways, 12 days since impact, at last. But a single part remains. Since I have recovered 29 of the missing parts, the dolphin's power is near capacity. In the four steps below, depths below, I see a region where the final part must lie. Clearly, this is my final trial. My life support fails in 18 days. Courage. We believe in you, Alamar. I believe in you, at least. Can't speak for everyone watching, but look at that. We have a Pikmin population of 980. We have over 400 reds, 181 yellows, and almost 400 blues. Going into, again, the final trial. And there it is. The final trial. I love in the background, you can see in the sky, there are like the shooting stars and everything. Oh, the world map in this game, I, I absolutely love it. All right, so let's think about what we want to do. There's the smoky frog here, and then there are two, count them, two enemies here that I want to talk about. So let's, let's start with that, because <laughs> they'll be a lot easier. There's actually a decent chance we'll, we'll beat him down. For the record, just because I do want to keep this playthrough relatively efficient and it's like my record, these are more like bonus episodes 
um, or this is a, more like a bonus half episode than an actual continuation of the playthrough. When we go to the final trial, it'll be from the most recent save prior to this day. But for now, we'll show off some of the cool designs this game has to offer. And enjoy the wonderful Impact Sight music. That is something I should comment on. I really appreciate the game design and the character design um, in this game. You can tell that certain enemies are, you know, more intimidating versions of previously familiar enemies, like the bull bears compared to bull orbs and such. Okay, that was really poor organization. All right, come on, guys, single file line. All right, that'll be good enough for now. So when we come up to the what? <laughs> when we come up to the tree stump, there's this huge watery thing going on. And it just kind of like stretches out towards you, which is really kind of weird. Um, and it just kind of like rotates around. You can, of course, um, what's it called? Outspeed it and everything. And in order to actually hurt it, you just need to attack its core like that. But what's weird is it doesn't even really attack the Pikmin itself. It just goes after Altlamar. So it's not really much of. Okay, I should actually pay attention. It's not really too much of a threat. I should also say, if Olimar is ever damaged, you can go back to the ship and heal up um, just by standing in front of the little light projection it has in front of it. But yeah, so this is called Gulix. It only shows up here. It shows up in the impact site on odd days after day eight. So we were here on day seven before um, this thing would show up. But yeah, it's not really a threat, which is part of why it's at the impact site the less threatening, or the least threatening place in the game. But it's pretty cool. I like the design, and it's neat that, I mean, it resembles water, and so you have to use water Pikmin specifically to defeat it. It's got a pretty cool animation. And then you get a whole bunch of pellets. So we'll take these back for now. And yeah, that's that's Gulix, um, I think. What's interesting is in on the title screen, they'll show some clips of people playing the game you actually see one clip where Gulix is in the forest navel, and I don't think it actually can show up there. I think it only shows up at the impact site. So, yeah, um, that's kind of interesting. But, all right, anyways, oh, we hit a thousand Pikmin. Interesting. Let's see, we should have had more because that were three blue pellets that would have the double bonus. So maybe there is actually a 1000 Pikmin limit. Huh. I had no idea. But anyways, we're gonna go to sunset because that's all I wanted to show you on this day. <laughs> you can see the huge blue Pikmin army. Love it. The two leaves in there like, hmm, I wonder if I can keep up with everyone. The answer is you can't. But yeah, so that's a fun enemy that a lot of times catches people off guard. If you regularly do come back to the impact site, which is a, not a bad strategy if you're taking your time and really need to build up your numbers. I mean, you guys saw it. There are tons of pellets there and very few enemies and what enemies there are are very much not threatening. Oh, rip. <laughs> That's right. There was one of the Pikmin that fell on the other side of the box. My bad, buddy. My bad. But again, I'm not really too concerned. Anyways, I guess we can see the journal entries for days 13, 14, and 15 because I don't think we will on the main playthrough. 13 days since impact. It's very strange. The scenery of this planet, which I found hostile, now sometimes strikes me as a surprisingly serene. As surprisingly serene. Perhaps the Pikmin have opened my heart to the beauty of this world. I even started thinking there were some parts I do not need. A daydream. Again, they keep hinting that you don't really need all one uh, or all 20 or all 30 parts to make it through. So we're not going to save, and we'll just keep continuing. And in fact, we're gonna go right back to the impact site because I mentioned that Gulix shows up in the impact site on odd days after day eight, but there's a different enemy on the even days. So here we are. I guess we'll pick the blue Pikmin for now. Again, it's not going to matter too much, I guess, just because... Oh, and interesting, look at the Pikmin total, it says 999. Maybe there was some glitchiness going on. I thought on the final screen it said like 983 on our like daily report from yesterday. 
But now it's saying 999 here, even though when we initially hit that limit, it said like about a thousand. So just for the sake of aesthetics, we'll get a nice colorful squad going here. Look at that. So again, iridescent flint beetle. Want to not distract my guys? Thank you. Okay, nice and bundled up. And what is that? We're gonna get the rest of our guys. <laughs> Although, it seems they have found a few bomb rocks. Come on. Stop playing around with the iridescent flint beetle. We've got a job to do. So, everyone, this is Mamuta, or Mamuta, Mamuta, I think. And look at it, it looks like a heart. It has kind of, you know, very soft eyes and features. It actually won't attack you. What? Oh, no. I was going to say, it won't attack you unless you attack it. Um, it gets all upset. It's a very friendly little thing. It just kind of looks at you, it's cohabiting, and until you attack it, it just, just lives with you, looks at you. And it's very gentle. Um, so, anyways, I guess I guess we'll attack it. Um, in and of itself, it's actually not like too crazy of an enemy. You'll see it has that sort of like slam type attack, and that's because it doesn't actually kill Pikmin. It just plants them back in the ground, which is really funny. Um, it, it can eat a ton of time. It doesn't turn them into leaves, it doesn't do anything like that. It literally just plants them in the ground. Again, it's the impact site, right? They're not going for crazy numbers, or crazy difficulty in terms of the enemies. Which makes sense. You know, this place is clearly established as a place where you can kind of recoup, right? And build up your numbers again, and, and so forth. It's not a place to be incredibly stressed about getting demolished by enemies that have invaded the place you once thought was your safe haven, right? Again, good game design. And again, I, I also just love the characters. I didn't even f finish my thought with regards to the, the fiery blowhog into the puffy blowhog. It's basically every time you see a new enemy, you get a better and better idea. And oh, look at that in the bottom right corner. We have 1014. So maybe it was, oh, I bet it was related to the Pikmin we left behind before. That would make sense. But yeah, every time you see a new enemy for the first time, you can usually tell based on its characteristics, either in uh, in relation to previous enemies you're familiar with, as to what type of attack it's going to do. Maybe the one exception is the Smoky Frog, <laughs> which of course is gonna be what we handle next. So I don't know where the last four Pikmin are, they're in there, okay. So I'll go grab them so that we don't get another heart-wrenching animation of them getting eaten as we leave, but we'll head back now. So because all those other Pikmin were at the onion, or, or at the base, they will be fine, and we were able to get everyone else in our party when we clicked go to sunset. Sometimes, honestly, if you're in a precarious situation, whether Pikmin are going to be died or, or, you know, dying or blown away or be knocked out of your command or something like that, it might make sense to just put them, or to whistle them and immediately click go to sunset. But, alright. So that's two of the secret enemies. I was, I was planning on doing a bonus episode after the end of the game, but realistically, I mean, it just makes sense to in this one. 14 days since impact, the Pikmin always carry their prey back to the onions. Close observation indicates that taking food pellets to onions of the same color results in the release of larger numbers of Pikmin seeds. I've also found ways to group Pikmin by color. I can hold A to grab one for a moment, or I can press X to dismiss them all. Very useful tactic. So we do have over a thousand Pikmin. Interesting. So we're not going to save again. And now for day 15, we're going to go back to the distant spring. All of our enemy friends are going to be back, so this is going to be an absolute bloodbath. <laughs> and I apologize in advance, Blue Pikmin, because it, it, it's going to be a, blo a bloodbath. I believe up until day 15, including, or up through day 15, that egg will be there, and thus the smoky prog is here. I believe. We will see, though. 
So all of our enemy friends are going to be back, though. I guess I can make... I should also mention... So we're getting to see a couple more journal entries than we would have otherwise. I can make a bonus episode detailing the different endings and the bonus... Ep or, like, the extra journal entries and stuff, too. So where is it again? Oh, it's not there? Aw, oh, man. So it's either a problem because it's already out and about running around because we already unlocked it or it's not included in day 15 all right i'll i'll save your ears for a moment guys all right stop making that noise we're gonna get over here it normally just kind of swarms your base and i don't see it there so I guess it's not here. So I guess what we'll do is we'll continue from our last save and then come back because you guys can see all the saves. We saved on day 13, or saved after day 12 essentially. This is the one where we completed all the parts. You guys can see the practice files. <laughs> So this will help us differentiate between which is the actual criteria. Is it that we haven't, is it a one-time thing, right? So because we've encountered it already, will we not be able to encounter it again? Or was it simply a matter of it doesn't actually include day 15 in the criteria for encountering the Smoky Prog? Almost ready. All right. Off we go. We might still have a decent number of enemies. Yeah, it looks like the Dumples are back. All right, we're gonna head in this direction. Guys, we've got a potential bloodbath on our hands. You're all flowers, minus like a few. <laughs> Come on. Okay, and the egg is not there. Wow, that's actually, um, that's actually a real shame. So it looks like it is just a one-time thing. So, what I'll do is I'll actually go to my practice file <laughs> where we haven't gotten all four parts here and we'll fight the Smoky Prog now. <laughs> Appreciate your patience. I wonder if this is going to end up actually being a paradoxically really long episode. I thought it was going to be too short, so figured might as well try and add a little bit of, you know, the content that I think you guys would appreciate. It was initially going to make a bonus episode to kind of supplement that day, but maybe now it's going on a little bit too long. Either way, at the beginning of the episode, when we were taking on this day for the first time, the egg was there, so I'm fairly confident it'll be there again. And we probably have fewer Wallywogs to worry about, and Dumples, so maybe this will be a blessing in disguise. Alright, so the Smoky Frog, it's actually theorized to be like a, like a baby Mamuta that hasn't fully, I guess, gone through its, like, birthing process or something like that. All right. Let's see if it hatches. Come on. You gonna do something? Oh, it's coming out. There it is. So this monster, it has this like toxic sludge. I think it just like bolts towards your base, which is really kind of strange. But um, it looks really cool to start. But it uh, has this toxic sludge that is an instant kill. Oh, no, 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 no. So you have to be really careful with where you throw your Pikmin because if they fall behind it all or get shake, shaked off or shook off like that, they'll just immediately die, which is lovely. So you can see why I said that this battle tends to be a, a massacre. Part of it is that when he, um, when it shakes off Pikmin, it'll throw them on the ground in front of it, and when you do that, and when he does that basically, oh, do I have him in like a nice little loop here? 
I don't think I've ever done this before. So what he'll do is he'll put them on the ground in front of him, and then he'll end up trampling them afterwards with that slime trail, which is pretty crazy. Wow, if I knew I could do this sort of like a stun loop, I would have done this during the end of the day that we actually recorded. Look at that animation. That's like pretty nuts, right? <laughs> the smoky prog sludge or whatever, it leads this leaves this one little thing here. I don't even know what to call it. A, a seed? A core? Something like that? You bring it back, and look at that Pikmin number in the lower right. 935 to... 1035. It gives you 100 Pikmin in whatever color you give back, obviously. I actually thought that was going to be a lot more of a bloodbath than it was. And it's all because... Well, it turned here and I was able to actually throw at its head face on, so I guess maybe a good strategy for that in the future, because I've never actually fought it before, <laughs> is to let it come to your base and then once it starts turning into the base, just really head on throw some Pikmin on its face and then keep it in that stun loop. That's pretty cool. I had no idea that could work. And honestly, maybe if I had practiced that at the end of that day, we could have really boosted our Pikmin numbers. But anyways, um. That, I guess, is all I wanted to show you in terms of the secret bosses and secret enemies. Again, this game has some really cool secrets that maybe not everybody runs into. And, yeah, uh, I guess in the next episode, we'll take a look at the final trial. We have quite a few Pikmin, and I think we're ready for it. Uh, we have plenty of flowers, we have all the different types, sufficient numbers, and all the skill, of course. <laughs> So I hope you guys are looking forward to the final trial. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it was a bit of um, all around the place. But again, this game is, is great. And it has so much to show. And I'm just excited to show all that it can. So anyways, look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode, which will be the finale. But until then, this is Moon Knight Zero. And this mission is complete.